What's the difference between acute inflammation and chronic systemic inflammation? Welcome to the Wellness Messiah podcast. I'm your host, Riman. A healthy, acute inflammation helps you to heal. That's great. But chronic systemic inflammation, it destroys your health, but secretly. Inflammation, chronic inflammation, bad inflammation, increases the risk of cancer, diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, you name it. In essence, inflammation is implicated in 70% of causes of death in developed countries. How do I know? I've read the statistics of death reports of many, many governments. Weirdo me. But inflammation doesn't do that in one day. It's a gradual, soundless process. You can think of chronic inflammation as an ongoing fire alarm inside the body that creates havoc, confusion. One thing you can measure in a lab that inflammation causes your body, causes your cells to stop preparing themselves. And the immune system, it goes berserk. What's the mechanism of chronic inflammation? There are three main metabolic mechanisms that control that. The first one is eicosanoids. These semi-hormones float in the blood and control the inflammation levels in the body. And what controls the eicosanoids? The type of fats that you eat in your diet. EPA in omega-3 activates eicosanoids that lowers inflammation. But it has to be fresh omega-3, as I explained in the guide about omega-3. Otherwise, it will increase inflammation. Omega-6, especially from cheap vegetable oils, increases inflammation. So controlling your oils controls eicosanoids, which controls inflammation. And by the way, which type of fat the fast food restaurants are using? Usually cheap, inflammatory, omega-6 vegetables oils. Now you can see the connection between junk food and fast food to inflammation and risk of diseases. The second mechanism that controls inflammation is cytokines. Inflammation is largely controlled by cytokines. These are hormone-like compounds like interleukin-6. These are dispersed locally around the body. You cannot really measure them easily with a blood test. However, leptin, a hormone secreted by the fat cells, which you can measure, control this local cytokines. By the way, leptin is also a cytokine on its own merit. So reducing leptin and measuring leptin is another mechanism that can protect you from inflammation. And there are two simple things you can do to reduce leptin. One is to lose weight, and two is reduce your carbohydrate intake. Losing weight is going to control half of the leptin, and the other half is what you're eating today. The more carbohydrates and sugars you've eaten, the more leptin you're going to have and the more inflammation. The third mechanism that controls inflammation in the body is called NRF2. NRF2 is a genetic mechanism. What it does, it reduces, reduces inflammation inside the cells. Again, you cannot really measure that. And luckily, there are many things that you can do today, very easy things that control NRF2, activate NRF2. This mechanism is one of the main reasons why green tea, broccoli, and broccoli sprouts and exercise are good for you, for your health. They all activate NRF2, which reduces, in turn, inflammation. And you can do them today. So these were the three mechanisms. There are other aspects and deeper aspects to inflammation. If you need me, I can delve deeper into ways to control inflammation. Until then, learn about inflammation, measure it, and reduce your risk of diseases. It can save your life. And if you think somebody you know has chronic inflammation or some kind of disease that implicated with inflammation and you want them to learn about this, please share this video. And from here, as I spoke about omega-3 as a way to reduce inflammation, I recommend that you watch the full guide about omega-3 and how to choose the right supplement that will reduce inflammation and not increase it. Thank you and have a wonderful day.